this is the easiest way that I can explain what a defendant is or what it is to defend a position. Like everybody knows if I said, hey, what does it mean if I defund you? Everybody knows, hey, that means to take away your funds, right? And then if I said, hey, you got to go fend for yourself for dinner, everybody knows, hey, you got to go take care of yourself for dinner. So when you take away the ability to fend for yourself, you're a defendant. You know, it's like if you're speeding and you're technically, you know, just for this conversation, if you're a driver and you're speeding, well, you're freaking guilty if you're in that world. But like JC was saying, man can't appear in this state, right? Because that's commerce. So if you start trying to defend, well, I was speeding because, well, if you, the minute you start offering an explanation, you're on the defense, you've lost. You've already lost. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like yeah. a demur, right? Well, they have to prove guilt. I mean, everybody knows. You Not in that world. Guilty. Yeah, I mean, knows. the thing is, is that when you start acting as a defendant, you act guilty. You're already guilty. You know, like, you're acting guilty because if you're not doing anything wrong, it's just like, what did I do wrong? Like, show me what I did wrong, and then I can decide whether I wish to defend it or not. Because if you're not doing anything wrong, there's nothing to defend. Well, the most you could say then is, I did not do that. No, now you're defending it. Who uh, cares? Uh, yeah, if not. So you're, you're missing the, the... Yeah, the point is, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. like for instance, with, with your thing, okay, so now that you know that there's, there's no prosecuting attorney, and more than likely it's the officer who arrested you, now it's a man-on-man action. Okay, so... So you wouldn't say, I wasn't doing that, or, you know, I was there because I worked there. I mean, you can say that you were there because you worked there. But really, the key question is, is what did you do to that officer that's so wrong that they went and took a legal plaint out against you? You know, like, what did I do to you? What did I cause you so much harm, injury, or loss that you took the initiative to go down to the courthouse and take a legal plaint against me. You know, because a lot of the stuff, like going down there and going through these things, it's all about reasoning and logicking it out. So if you can have a better philosophy than the next one, you know, that's how you're probably going to win. Now remember, it's a court playing a game on a court, man. You just got to be a better actor than the other side. Yeah, you got to perform, you know? Like, I mean, that's what a court is there for. It's a stage. It's a performance. It's a show. Well, I like the idea of writing it out and hand it to him. Because then he's got to look at the words on the page. He's got to process the words on the page. The words on the page are true. And he's got to look at me. We'll be looking back at him. Tonight, we were going to um, we were gonna present like a... Uh, like a scenario, like when we, on one, on a, def, you know, from a uh, purely defensive, for lack of a better term, defensive posture, like not, in other words, not trying to move your own action or claim, you know, basically there's like, you know, you could say four or five steps that you've got to be at. And, and really this would apply to you because if you're at step three, you're in deep trouble and you need to really start thinking about what's going on. If you're at step five, you're buried, you're guilty, and you're a defendant. See, once you start defending, you're guilty. Now you're trying to explain why you're not. You know, it's kind of like guilty till proven innocent. Right. I mean, it's really that simple. So tonight, you know, we were going to go over, JC and I were going to kind of go over it from a, a step process that maybe helps people process that information. And you could really flip flop one and two, wouldn't you think, JC? You know, the wrong and the accuser. You could you could kind of flip flop those, but technically speaking, for in your case, right? Who's accusing you of doing wrong? Well, in this case, it's the man acting as the police officer. Okay, so I'll ask you the question again. Who's just think about what I'm asking you? You know, I'm not being derogatory or anything. I just want you to really think about what I'm asking you. Who is accusing you of doing wrong? That's a good question, because honestly, I don't know. I'd have to speculate. I hate to speculate in matters like that. Now, let me ask you this way. Did anybody accuse no, you of nobody, doing wrong? No, nobody's accused me of doing wrong. They accused me of oh. or prowling. Okay, so what does every man have a right to face? 
their accuser. Everyone knows that. Okay, so if there's no accuser, what isn't there? Well, there's no man there. Well, that's true, but what what would be another, like, what would be step two then? If we know there's no man there accusing you, what isn't he accusing you of? Well, he's not accusing me of doing wrong. He's accusing me of uh, prowling, of uh, violating. No, no, stop. Yeah. yeah, he's not accusing you of doing wrong, so is there a case? And something that I think that everybody should know just because we're in this part of the conversation, uh, the cop is only a witness. The officer is only a witness. He only witnesses what you do. He very, very rarely accuses you. And if he accuses you of doing something wrong, then you had to do something wrong to him or her. But if, if they're not accusing you of doing something wrong to him or her, then they can only be a witness. They cannot be an accuser. And without an accuser of wrongdoing, man, there's no case. There's no crime. No crime, yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing, like, why are we here? Well, you did this, this, and this. Is that wrong? Did it harm somebody? Did I harm you? Is there what? a reason we couldn't talk about this in private before you dragged it down to the courthouse? You know, and they're going to say, no, you didn't do anything wrong to me. Well, then who did I do wrong to? That's Nobody. a good question. It's a great question. Why are we here? You could even write that down and hand it to them. I don't know. I wonder if I attempted to do that. Do what? Who did I wrong? Yeah, it's a great yeah, question. I, I know I did nothing wrong. And, no one was wrong. And keep in mind, yeah, so you're going to step three. That's what we were, you know, we were telling you. Remember, you don't want to, you want to start expounding. Just ask simple things. Like you say, you know, less is more, right? So who did I do wrong? They got to answer that, man. You first have to establish your man, though, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And, and this is getting to something. So, you know, I kind of started off talking about how a man cannot appear in a state court. And so when you put in a notice of appearance, which I suggest everybody who's going to court at any time, like, you know, your notice of appearance is just for that day, okay? And you wish to appear before or at the court, never in the court, because a man cannot appear in the court. And when you notice then that a man is coming before the court, uh, it goes ahead and acts as a special appearance. They understand that you're coming from another jurisdiction into their jurisdiction, and you're only doing this just to figure out what's going on. And so another thing that's really important about that is uh, representation of persons. And people, you know, I think that people have a hard time with this idea, but representation of persons is a fiction of the law. And when you step in to that fiction, you know, when you become a defendant through your actions or whatever, uh, once you're a fiction of the law, then they can write that fiction to be whatever they wish it to be. So not only do you have to notify them that you appear as a man, but you also have to stay out of that representation of persons and the definition in, in black law fourth edition for representation of persons is a fiction of the law the effect of which is to put the representative in the place degree or right of the person represented so when you step into the defendant person then you only have their rights the rights of a defendant person which you know obviously in their world is none you know, because really it's just privileges. They're not rights. Only man has rights. And as a defendant, you really have a duty to lay there and take a beating because the whole reason they created a defendant was to extract monies, which is why they charge you. You know, it's a charge, like a credit <laughs> card charge, you know. And and think about it, you know, and, it, and there's some confusion on the discharge, dismiss thing. Like those of you guys on the call who've been in the military – you know, your colonel, your captain could bring you into the room and, and, you know, order you in there and say, hey, you've got to go clean the latrine with a toothbrush and lick the thing with your, you know, tongue. Okay, uh, you're dismissed. He can always call you back in five minutes later, a week later, a day later. But if, he, if you're discharged from the military, man, that same guy can't come tell you anything. You know, these words are, like, really, really important. So taking on that role or that title or rank 
you have certain duties to uh, adhere to, and within that framework, you might have some privileges. But you know, learning the words, you know, we talked about this last week. Learning these words and how to break them down. Some of them you're just going to have to sit and logic your way through. Because I don't care how many times you Google it, you may not find it. But you can use Webster's and Etymoline and things of that nature to and friends to sit with you and break these words down. I mean, JC and I do this all the time. We spend hours and hours breaking down one, two, three words and then seeing how to apply them to a you know a sentence or a or a thought. And Gus should be putting a, a pull up for the from the common law Solomonism page. And basically the tool is a dictionary of prefixes and suffixes because there are some words that have been being altered for such a long time that literally you have to take the root of the word and you have to add on the meanings of the prefix and the suffix to get the real meaning of the word. That's all on the site already. If you guys go to the, the website, Redress for Dummies, you'll see the Common Law Shamanism page. It's a temporary page. We're going to revamp the whole website to reflect the direction we're going in. And there's a, a book called Lessons in English that is listed there. And there's also uh, Webster's 1828. And the website that JC just talked about, it's a prefix and suffix website, dictionary online. All that's on that uh, common law shamanism page that we're eventually going to, we, we're just going to redo the whole website, but it's redress for dummies. The shortcut is r4d.info. So, like, once you go and you put in your notice of appearance and you inform the court that you're going to appear as a man, I would say probably nine times out of ten, most jurisdictions that I've sat in the court and watched that. Do you represent yourself? Are you going to hire an attorney? Or do you wish for a court-appointed attorney? This is kind of a trick question. So anybody that the shaman and I work with, we always give them kind of quick, funny little pointers. Um, And so the one that we've kind of gone with the most for this is how do I represent myself? I'm here, I'm present. I'm ready to get this going on now because as soon as you represent yourself, you step right back into the representation of persons. And, um, you know, if they don't go for that, how do I represent myself? Just ask them, can you demonstrate how one represents themselves? You know, like I don't do this for a living like the rest of y'all. Okay, so I don't know how to represent myself. I'm present, I'm here now, I'm ready to do whatever we got to do. Can you demonstrate how to represent yourself? Does the court wish that I leave and go put a bow on my head and come back in? You know, represent. So you've you've actually uh, done that. Ask them what does represent mean? How can I do that? <laughs> oh yeah, and dude, they will they will stop talking. Well, yeah, because they'll probably hold you to the end enough. of the day. I imagine huh? they don't hear it that often. That's probably usually a new one for them, unless they happen to have met you before. Well, for instance. I'm working with people in a certain jurisdiction, and at this point, they don't even ask people anymore. They just say, hey, if you don't have an attorney and you're not going to get a court-appointed attorney, you got to come up and find this page, which, of course, on the page, it's saying that you're going to represent yourself. But they've had so many people stand up in an open court and ask that that they won't, they won't actually ask that out loud in an open court anymore. Really? We're yeah, in certain jurisdictions. So uh, but how can they force you to sign it? I mean, how can that possibly... They, they can't. Yeah. You know, and this is this is why you always put in a notice of appearance is so that they don't go back later and say, ah, they never appeared in person. You know, we got to sign a bench warrant for their arrest. Uh, so yeah, if yeah. they sign a bench warrant, you can always go back and say, whoa, 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 I got the stamped copy from the clerk. Mm-hmm. And I was there. Is this uh, similar to, I've heard other people talk of putting a notice in and handing, handing to the judge, having the bail, hand, bail of hands to the judge, saying that, uh, you know, notice I appear here only as a man, and anyone giving title to me takes full responsibility for anything that happens because of that title. What if you just stand well, as a man, appearances, that's like a ghost. Well, and, yeah, and I mean, you know, you want to basically keep all of your ideas real separate. Um, so you have like three or four ideas running in there 
all together. So I would just put in like a notice of how you appear. You know, you could put in a notice of liability, but honestly, I wouldn't start threatening until they cross some sort of line. And also, based upon what you said, it almost sounded like you were going to wait until the very last second to do that. Um, there may come a time, and we're we're finding this because you know sometimes they're really really difficult in trying to get paperwork filed. But you know you, you know that's something you want to address long before you get there. I mean, you can have your world built for you so that when you get there, you just you know you're stepping in in your own little bubble, and you've already got it established but like he was talking about with the roll call thing you know what they're trying to do is they may tell you you have to do this one two and three right you have these three options yeah but there's four and five as well and uh if you you know you don't have to do anything anybody tells you to do unless of course you're a person it's the false choice the assumptive close they call it in sales hey do you want to pay that with mastercard or visa well no i'm going to pay in cash oh okay yeah, I mean, it's the appearance, you know, just because something said, I mean, I mean, hell, the Pope claimed the whole freaking planet and all the people in it doesn't make it so. He can say that, but it's not true. But it's true if nobody, you know, says otherwise. Well, only if you consent. Don't consent. Well, if you don't say anything, you consent. Well, that'd be a good idea for a separate notice. My feeling is <laughs> probably why consent. Yeah, and it's like JC said, you know, you get these thoughts separate. You know, a lot of times you see people do shotgun blasts like, you know, in a minute I'm going to read something to you guys. I'm going to omit the, the names, but this gentleman had a really nice man help him. They put in like a four-page motion challenging jurisdiction when really that's as simple as three words. And you don't even have to, you know, you don't even have to use the words, I challenge jurisdiction, you know. And typically, when you can, huh? Well, I just, I, I've, I've read some other people who are not related to, commonly, but the people have uh, studied here that I'm familiar with. Um, I'll see if I can dig it up and share it with Gus. It was, it was pretty good. It was uh, another way to go about getting relief, which was uh, this person got very good at challenging jurisdiction and asking questions like, I was in a state. Well, what's a state? Well, where is the state? I was not in a state. I was on the land. I was here, you know, in my town. But that's not in the state. State's a fiction. It doesn't exist. Prove it exists. And, of course, they can't because it's it's fictional. It's fictional lines on the map. It's nothing that's created there. There's no boundary created by nature or God. It's just something man made up. And, like, I can't be in that because I'm not in that. I'm a man. Man is not in that. And I'm not actually doing justice to the, the way he presented it, but uh, he seemed to have quite a bit of success with it. So I'll see if I can. Thanks for reminding me. I'll dig that up. I'll see if I can pass that to Gus. Maybe I'll look at it. Maybe there's something of value in there that uh, that people can use. So He just brought up a pretty good point. Like within the state, all of the statutes absolutely apply within the state. It's just what is the meaning within the state? And the meaning within the state is only state property. It's only property that the state owns or the county owns. Yeah, you know, like different jurisdictions actually have to adopt certain things to be able to even enforce a state code. I've seen that time and again. So you would recommend or suggest that if you were to file notices, you should do one idea per notice. Keep it nice and clear. Absolutely. Yeah. And here's something else to think about as well. <clears throat> there was, it was a line in a movie, I don't remember which one it was, but we use it quite often. Never answer the question they ask you, but always answer the question you wish they'd asked you. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, they may, you know, just like, uh, are you representing yourself? Do you have an attorney you need one appointed? You know, you're going to completely ignore that, but completely address it. You know, you're going to say, I am present. You know, that answers their question without answering it. You know, uh, you're in our jurisdiction. I am man. Okay, well, you just told them you're not in their jurisdiction. Absolutely. Now they have to go, well, hold on a minute. Now we're dealing with man and not a fiction of the law. He's present. And then, you know, and all these thoughts are separate. they got to deal with each and every one of these things. And, of course, they're going to try to knock you off that position, right, so that they can put you into an indefensible position. And one thing that the shaman just addressed that's absolutely correct 
is that when you can uh, challenge, you know, doctrines of law like jurisdiction or even good faith without having to actually say those words, it's incredibly powerful. Uh, just like saying, I am man who does no wrong. So right there, you're challenging the jurisdiction of the court. And another thing that you're challenging is in personum jurisdiction in legalese terms. But you're not actually saying that. You know, and I mean, even when you're saying that you do no wrong or, or who claims I do wrong, okay, so right there, you're challenging the fact that they have failed to state a claim for which relief can be granted, but you don't bring up Rule 12B or whatever it is. That's what it is. If I may, I, you know, you get a document, and this one just happens to be from the IRS, you know, and it's like, you know, they're talking to this uh First, you have all this whole all capital letter title for a court at the top, and then an entity as the petitioner, and then you have this respondent, all capital letters, and then you have this big title in bold underprint, underscore, uh, all capital letters, and then they go on to talk about a respondent, and then they slip over to a defendant, and they talk about, you know, hey, this was challenged of uh, personal, they say personal jurisdiction. There's a mer And then they go on to explain how the court has personal jurisdiction over Mr. Smith and the court has jurisdiction over Mr. Smith's person. Personal jurisdiction is established in 26 USC. And then it says if any person summoned, and it's like for which such person resides, Okay, guys, there's literally nothing in there talking to this man. And it's not even English. Like, the things that are important, like who it's from, who the petitioner is, who they're petitioning, and what the hell they're talking about isn't even on the page because no all-capital word exists in the English language. So what happens? You get that in the mail, and you're like, oh, my God. And you start calling everybody. And you start doing this and doing this and doing that, da, da, and you're freaking out. And everybody's been there, including me. And uh, it's not there. It's just not there. So if you go back to law and the rules of English, and that knowledge is going to help you understand something else is going on, then you can start dealing with it piece by piece, you know? And it gives you a, an incredible amount of confidence. Like, you know, we were looking on the board, and we, we talked about it at nauseum, and there's a WhatsApp group that we joined, and you know, you're watching these 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 things like somebody will say something and and then somebody will explode with that's ridiculous and this is wrong and you ask them why and suddenly their little fingers quit working you know it's like you know jc got challenged on his state man going into a state court thing but the more knowledge you have the more time you take to dissect these issues on your own the more confident you feel and i truly can tell you that the creator is able to communicate with you in your heart at a level that most people never reach. It just It's just something that takes time and uh, a lot of willpower to get through. You know, I don't naturally like to study. I hate it. I'm a, I'm a, I have the attention span of a gnat. So it takes a lot of willpower to sit there and read, you know. But it's detrimental to your survival, especially in a stage in history that we're, you know, seemingly moving into. It's a very da dangerous stage. Have it's going to take a lot faith. of knowledge. I'm sorry, I'm just saying have faith. I, I think you may be pleasantly surprised by things going forward. It's always darkest before the dawn. Tell well, I'm not, I'm not like losing my mind over it. I'm just telling you on the front line, we see it. I'm just, it's just an observation. I mean, I'm not going to quit and I'm not losing faith. I'm just saying without knowledge, we will lose. Okay. Without fortitude and knowledge Is your and a heavy constitution, been? there's no winning, you know. So uh, when the shaman Gus and I were talking this week, and this just made me laugh, but uh, when I was sitting in jail for contempt of court the other week, which was complete BS, they won't produce a court order or a warrant because they never get, got jurisdiction. But when I was down there getting checked in, the nurse said that, she believes I have maybe odd, like oppositional defiance disorder, 
that would be like ODD. So oh, I yeah. have odd, <laughs> and uh, it could be contagious. It might be passed over the phone lines. I hope none of you get it. And if you don't wish to get odd, then uh, now's your time to run. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they actually, uh, that was, it's fascinating. Now, if you have an opinion that differs from them, you're now, they're borderline calling you clinically insane. Like you have a mental disorder. But pedophiles, oh no, now they get a platform to, to speak from, and that's just, you know, we have to be understanding, right? But if you if you question any of the uh, government statutes or anything that they're doing to you, well, what did you, what'd you call again? Oppositional defiance disorder. I just oh, call ODD. It but uh, the other the other point I didn't really get to was the main point of it is like fine if you're going to challenge people, man, just prove up. Like do the study, do the research. Just don't get on there because some guy on the internet said something that said somebody said something else. That's the problem with most people today is hearsay, hearsay, hearsay. And you got to think the other side's out there putting that shit on the computer so that everybody goes out and says, ooh, and then like a rocket, they're off, and that's the next new thing. And then it just tears down people until they find the next new thing. And then people chase rabbits to the point they get exhausted, and then they give up, and they quit, and they get hopeless. Because of my personal opinion, this is a spiritual war. You know, it's, it's a spiritual war over free will. I agree. And... Typically, the courts are there to get consent. Like, you have to give up your free will. You have to give up your consent. And the way that they get that 98% of the time is through overt tactic and implied consent. Through asking questions like, uh, are you going to represent yourself? Are you going to hire an attorney? Do you wish for a court-appointed attorney? Either way, they're telling you the only three options are to you know, step into a turn yourself over to their court. You know, it's kind of like uh, going in there and they ask, uh, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Uh, What about I plead, I don't agree with the statute. What about that one? What did I do wrong? What about I plead that? You know? What am I even doing here? Let's get to that first. Do I cause harm to you? You know, I've actually been at court and looked at him and said, look, I don't understand any of y'all's talk. I didn't go to school for it. I'm just an everyday country fellow here. I just understand the common tongue. And, you know, I don't understand all this stuff. Y'all just tell me which one y'all have done harm to, and I'll settle it right now. Man, they just stare at you. How do you even answer that, and how do you get pissed at somebody like that? Now, the guy that comes in, slams his fist on the table and says, you can't do this to me, and you can't do that, and you have no right, and you're a fraud, and there's a sescue trust, and the trust of the car that broke the neck of the fish that's like what <laughs> who the what the hell are you talking about man <laughs> and just go in there and say hey what's up fellas which one of y'all i do wrong so i can settle up that's so they may even like you by the time you leave there that's what i did in my in the, this lean case they had against me i just kept letting it slide letting it slide letting it slide then april 3rd came and i just i have put all my paperwork in the week before i went in there they like is there anything you want to say? I'm like, yeah, just bring the man forward who claims our debt. And they were just like shuffling papers and they didn't want to look me in the eye. Then, <laughs> then they, they, they asked the, um, the, the prosecutor, Sir, did you, did you see this paperwork? He said, did you send me that? Paperwork? I'm like, yep. I sent you the paperwork and I sent them the paperwork and I sent them the paperwork. And they're like, okay, we'll send those for another court case. And then freaking the next day, they put the, the the track to complex. So I'm like, what? So that means that they're not going to, they, they don't probably don't even want to touch this case. Like the court case was April 3rd. They have a year from there to deal with this. If not, they're going to dismiss it. So I'm like, they're probably going to dismiss it earlier because I'm like, y'all ain't going to bring nobody forward. So drop it. Yeah, and see how you're laughing about it. Like you don't, man, anger is like, like I'm sure you figured out just by based on what I just heard. You weren't acting all pissed off or anything, were you? No, yeah, I was. No, I was sitting at the seat because um, the law, the judge wasn't in the courtroom. He, like they, you know how they have the table in front and they have everybody sitting in front at the table. I just walked in, sat down, looked at everybody behind me, looked at the ceiling, and just wow, they got nice 
What up on the ceiling? Where did he get that from? <laughs> and yeah, man. Just like, <laughs> the courthouses tend to be pretty nice. They have some money to spend on them. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, you don't flip it over. Like, you're on the other side. And some guy comes in there. And, man, he acts like, I don't care if I'm here or not. I don't, I don't what? Almost like an afterthought. How do you mm-hmm. think? You know, it's really hard to control somebody like that. Exactly. And then after I left. After after it was over, the dean lawyer, the, the the lawyer for the the debt collection agency, he came up. He said, "You know, you have to get a a payoff code." I'm like, "Just bring a man or woman for the claims over debt." I said, "I paid for it. Just bring him for it." He just, yeah, okay, bye. And just ran off. And I'm just like, "Really? Like that's it?" Like, <laughs> I'm just, at first I was sitting here like, "Oh my god, I didn't know what to do." I'm sitting here like, "Man," then I started listening to you know calls call stuff and I was just like you know what let me just try this because I said if I'm going to do it if I'm going to tell someone how to do um to do something I'm going to be the one to do it first to say you know what I did it you can do it too and I said all right let me go and I went and I did it and I'm like wow just like that I, I swear it took no more than five minutes hey what's what's your name man my name yeah if you yeah if you don't mind, mind. Like, if you mind, Steven. you don't have to give your name. Steven. Or even a handle, just what you're going by. Steven, it's Junez on the... June. Junez? On the, yeah. On the <laughs> That's cool, man. I really like your attitude on it. Like, and you were sending them paperwork before? Yeah, I sent the paperwork a week before because I was like... Because cause I know you're supposed to send it like 21 days or something like that, but I was like... Yep. I totally forgot or whatever. I was like, man, I sent it a week before. I sent it next day so everybody got it. So no, and they had to sign <laughs> for it. So yeah, no, I was like, yeah, expensive. Like they definitely noticed that you sent it next day. You know, mm-hmm. so I yeah. mean, if you only have like a week, that's probably the best way to handle it because then they know, like, okay, he went out of his way. He he paid the twenty dollars to send this the next day, and we know he has a receipt. <laughs> yeah. So, but the interesting thing is, man, is like if you don't send them that paperwork, that's not real likely to work because their yeah. entire world is on paper. So, if you just mm-hmm. go in there and perform, that's not enough. You gotta send that paperwork in first. Yeah. yeah. And it's they, better that they don't ambush them too. Yeah. They look dumbfounded when they seen that because, like, um, they had it in the case file, and they had it was the first. It was the first papers in the case file. Because when you open the case file, he's like, who's this? I'm like, that's me. <laughs> They're like, oh, oh. And did you see this? Yeah, did you see this? I, I didn't see this. I'm like, I sent it, I sent it to you. I told the, um, the prosecutor, I'm like, I sent you the paperwork. You got it the same day they got it. I, I got to find this paperwork. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Just have fun, you know. You got another court case. I'm still looking online every day, just because I'll get the emails when they update the court case. So I'm just looking anyway. I know it was like April 3rd, and they this May now. They ain't touching this case. I'm just like, okay, just let me know when. And if I if I, if I have to go back, I'm gonna just be like, y'all got the paperwork. Nothing changes. It's right there. Please refer to the paper the notice I gave you a month ago, or a year ago, or ten years, six years ago, but. Yeah. Hey, so this is uh, is it a credit card or something? A tax lien foreclosure case. Yeah, tax lien foreclosure. So yeah. what's really interesting is now that they already have you in there, you can like I'm guessing that they don't have a verified complaint. That's all right. All right, well, just tell them that. Is. Tell them yeah. that. Just say, hey, I noticed that you don't have a verified complaint. Do you wish to keep moving? I'd really like it if you stopped right now, you know? Mm-hmm. So, because be, being proactive is a lot better than being reactive, because I've definitely seen situations where people are kind of like it's going like that for them, and then at the last minute, they bring them in and they really test them. And sometimes it goes wow. well, sometimes it doesn't go so well. Um, but in situations like that, a lot of times they will wait until the last minute. Uh, so. But it sounds like you're doing really good. I would just be a little more proactive at it. And, you know, if you know that they already 
are missing the verified claim or the verified complaint, just uh, notify them, you know, cool. and ask the attorney to write you back. Just talk to a man to man. Cool. Yeah, because they be seeming to be switching attorneys every dang time. First it was this attorney, then it was another attorney, then it was this, this new guy. And I'm like, geez, like, how many attorneys do you people have? And I went on the website, they had like 50 attorneys. I'm like, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. A lot of times I've been in and they're actually going to trial, and they'll have four or five different other attorneys on the other side. And then it's like on, on this side, you just have this one man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if, like, if yeah, if this stuff wasn't kind of a solid foundation, then why would you need four or five other guys to try and com- combat it? You know? Exactly. Yeah, because it was him and another attorney with him. And I guess the other, other attorney was doing some other lean cases because it was just basically freaking foreclosure court cases, left and right. It's all it was foreclosure court cases. And I'm just like, Jesus, everyone's in here for foreclosures? And that company is mostly breadwinners for freaking foreclosures. Yeah, they got a damn monopoly. And that's exactly what they build it up to be. You know, they're they're the guys who are going to all of the judges' Christmas parties. You know, Mm -hmm. they're getting together for New Year's. They're rubbing elbows with each other all the time. Because even on the in-group, like even inside the legal society, there's still an in-group, out-group mentality. And it's only the the elite, you know, like the better off to do of that culture that really builds up to what most people, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, that's an <laughs> awesome story, man. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Because, you know, I think people need to hear more stories like that. They got to hear more stories where people are actually going in there and they're having fun with it. You know, like I was talking to my friend the other day and uh, I was laughing because uh, she mailed the attorney service and he returned it. Like he returned service to mail, which was really fun because then we got to go into the court and say, hey, go find your officer. Your officer abandoned the court. Go find them. That's wow. your job, you know. But uh, like, it, you know, it's just really funny. And I was, I was laughing about it. And my friend's like, "Why are you laughing? You know, what's so funny about this?" And I go, "Look, this man there, he has a dynasty in law. Okay, he is the third of his generation. His father practiced law of that firm. His father's father did too, and created it." And he has two daughters that work there. He has a dynasty in law in that town, and he's running from little old you. <laughs> you know, he's yeah. running from little three years. <laughs> and you ain't never graduated college. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have a law degree. You didn't build this huge dynasty and, uh, you know, w- work to acquire all of the status among society, and you're getting him to run away from you in law. Mm-hmm. So, and it's kind of interesting because it's kind of similar like in that particular instance the attorney does not have a verified claim he does not have a verified complaint they ain't going to get one <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean yeah. He'll liable for that. If, you, if you didn't file it if they did not file the verified complaint or the verified claim when they uh, filed the suit then you can't ever, you can't go back, unless you actually amend the action, you can't go back and place in a verified claim or a verified complaint later. Yeah. So, yeah, if I, if I were you, I would definitely get in touch with uh, whatever law firm or whoever the man or woman is moving the action against you and just write them a, you know. I notice I didn't see a, do you have a verified claim? And I bet they probably going to get back to me. Then I got to write a phone. Hey, I wrote you a letter two weeks hey, ago. And I, <laughs> I can tell you firsthand experience when you ask these people, like especially if they say, hey, a lawsuit's been filed against you, which there can't be <laughs> technically. Mm-hmm. Not against a man, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when you ask them where that's at, you really see whether or not you're over the target. Mm-hmm. Believe me. Hey, I just... Uh, oh, I believe you. 
I just got a question that popped up on my feed, and it says, uh, can they explain a verified complaint? And this is a very, very, very important question, okay, because every suit has to have one, all right? Otherwise, they can never, ever, ever establish jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So what a verified complaint is, is think about it. When somebody goes and they punch you in the face and you're going to go swear out a warrant for their arrest, you have to actually go into the magistrate's office and in, you know, like being there, being present with your voice, you have to say what happened to you. And that's a verified mm -hmm. complaint. That's a verified claim. And so for most people, when they go and hire an attorney, the attorney doing on their behalf will write a verified complaint and affidavit. Okay, so the affidavit part of the complaint is what verifies the complaint. And on that particular document, whoever the man or the woman who is actually in, uh, initiating the suit, they have to sign it being sworn in front of a notary. So typically when um, fictitious entities are coming after you because they have no vocal cords or arms or legs, they can't go out and actually hire an attorney themselves, Typically, when a fictitious entity is coming after you, then the verified complaint is not there, which means that they have no personal jurisdiction, and they will never be able to establish it. As long as and, you Wish I had known that five years ago. And so uh, cer a certain thing that they'll do, especially now, because people really started figuring this stuff out back in 2005, 2006. And so now what they'll do is they'll have the attorney look over the documentation and then verify that the documentation is there. But the only problem is, is that the attorney cannot verify that the documentation is 100% accurate. Yeah, yeah. They can't verify even in a freaking, any case that has to do with any sort of debt, they can't verify every single digit there is accurate. The damn company itself can't do it. It they have no damn first -hand Yeah, they don't have first-hand knowledge. Damn computer printout is damn. Like, if you go by that, that's why I was like, I, I was like, did any I got a piece of the damn instrument before the court? Just sign it and swear that it's true and I'll pay every freaking dime. Silence. I just heard crickets. I heard crickets and heavy breathing. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> that's, all I, that, that, that's all I stood on for five minutes, five to ten minutes. And I'm like, and that's because I knew that's they were going to do. And I bet, I bet in those five to ten minutes, they probably did something. At least the man acting as judge or the woman acting as judge to try and knock you off that position. Correct. I didn't even see a judge. Uh oh. So you were just yeah. dealing with uh, the attorneys on the other side. I was dealing with the attorneys and these other guys. I guess they were taking for the judge or something. There is a resolution. Like it's the resolution part of the. Oh. Uh, mediation maybe they have a referee where they don't have like an actual judge where y'all still meet up and they have like a referee yeah. or some something like that to go right. over the legal process and see that process mm -hmm. isn't even a process of law like that's a mm -hmm. complete process made up from the legal society hey uh that brings up a point uh civil asset forfeiture civil asset forfeiture mm -hmm. so civil asset that forfeiture is, uh, you know, pretty interesting. Like a lot of people get really upset about it, but really, all you have to do. Um, the reason people get upset about it is because, man, if a cop is going to take, you know, between a thousand, and really, if a cop doesn't take up to ten thousand dollars, there's not a whole lot of reason to go and get an attorney because you're going to pay an attorney, you know, six thousand dollars to get seven thousand dollars back, and it's going to cost take you, you know, a year and a half, and they're just going to kind of drag you through the system. So really, mm -hmm. all you got to do is it's pretty simple. You can go make a claim for that property. And typically what they do is they'll send you some type of notice to where they're basically accusing the property itself of committing a crime, which is kind of absurd, because for a crime to be committed by something, it has to have intent. And because property isn't conscious or breathing or living, then there can never be intent. And you're talking about 
cars, trucks, boats, houses, um, you know, monies, whatever they're going to say, you're civilly forfeiting the asset. Um, all you got to do is go and claim it. Uh, and they will have to that. open. Huh? No, I was saying I noticed so all they got to a court case, like court paperwork documents, is basically affirmation. Like, well, I can affirm any damn thing. I don't give a damn. I don't, it, I don't mean it's true. I affirm on this day, this happened. And I'm like, okay, verify it. I don't care about your affirmation. You can affirm you're a Jedi. I don't care. <laughs> verify it. <laughs> Like, people just, yeah. I guess they, they see that stack of paperwork and they just be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's over. Oh, they're going to take my house. Like, really? It's a piece of paper. Hey, one thing I noticed, too, getting back to the verifiable complaint or the verifiable claim is, especially in tax court, what they do is they, they do a certified. And it's funny how they do it. Somebody in one office says, oh, you owe this much money. And then they send it over to another office far, far away, and then somebody certifies that they saw that somebody owed something on paper, and then they go and take people's shit. Yeah. Well, a bunch and, of time. and typically yeah. with stuff like that, it's, uh, you know, they'll send an assessment. They always send an assessment first, and then they'll take like the assessment and, and have something happen to it, and then they'll look at something like a lien, like a tax lien. And when they have a tax lien, depending on what jurisdiction you're in, sometimes you have to go to court. Like, they have to drag you into court to keep up the lien, and other times they don't. So sometimes, like, when you get a notice of a, of a tax lien, you'll actually have to write them back and say, hey, it's nice that you wish to put this tax lien on my, on my home, on my property, or my car, vehicle, uh, but I'm going to have to challenge it. You know, you're going to have to open court to keep this enforceable. Yeah, because out here in New York, they do um, 90 days. So in about February, they send the letters out, hey, you got a 90-day notice of tax lien. Then after 90 days, they select to the debt collection agency. Then the debt collection agency sends you a letter like, hey, you owe us this much money plus lawyer fees plus something else. And it's like, <laughs> okay, who the hell are you people? And then after that, then they send you the dang court papers, like, a year or two later. They got a dang racket because they, they show you, like, in Brooklyn, they got the freaking, they got it in every borough, and they got every house in every borough that's under a tax lien. And it tells you whether it's just water or just property tax. And if it's both, it's both. And, yeah, they, they tack on lawyer fees immediately. And I'm like, why am I paying for your lawyer fees, like? I don't make no damn sense. You're trying to sue me and I got to pay your lawyer? But, yeah, the I had a buddy thing. argue that point in court here just recently, and uh, yeah, the judge looked up and says, yeah, good point. <laughs> and then they didn't get nothing for the lawyer fees. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that whole certification thing. So like up here where I'm at, you know, like same for taxes, you know, they've got their federal court, which is the no-name federal court that everybody's seen, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on paper. They got their yeah. tax court. The only way you enter tax court is if they suck you into petitioning tax court, which you don't want to do. And then they've got, uh, like, our version of the state court where a man can't be heard, right? Oh. And, uh, it's, you know, it's totally uh, administrative here. And, uh, and so, yeah, so this woman, uh, you know, she swears on information, the guy that he broke these six different tax rules. Of course he's fucking guilty. He's not volunteering to act as a taxpayer. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody on the call have any like questions that they need help with, or, or anything they're intrigued by, or wondering about, or something they might be confused about, or just something they wish to bring what up? Is, what is the difference between an administrative court and every other type of court? Okay, so this is basically like why a man can't appear in a state court is because all state courts are administrative and this is why people you know everybody's been asking for a court of record and really what they wish for is a court of law it, you know a court of record is interesting and it, it moves under common law but it moves under the common law of that particular court uh, which of course in state courts and administrative courts it's statutes 
Um, but of course, statutes are statutory instruments, and in some way they have to get your consent because it's administrative. Like one thing to keep in mind when you're going in for a notice or whatever is uh, you have the right to due process of law, not due process of administrative courts with legalese. Doesn't U.S. Court.gov clearly state that all state courts are That's courts crazy. of record? Yes, but it's it's their particular court of record. Just like when we were talking about it earlier, and it's like up in other jurisdictions, you know, like the circuit court could be the magistrate's court, which is the Neus Prius court, which isn't a court of record, or it could be a court of common pleas or district court or superior court. And all of these different courts, they all keep records, unless it's a Neus Prius court. Um, and the other thing is they are courts of record and they have their own common law. And their own common law is basically the statutory law. It's the rules of civil procedure. And that's what they move under when you're moving in a district court or a superior court. And that's not, <clears throat> that's an administrative court. It's an administrative process because that's all the legislature can do is administration. The law is very, very solid. From my understanding is, like, um, down on state side there, these guys have a court of inherent jurisdiction within the states, plus I believe you also have the federal court of inherent jurisdiction. And up here, where I'm at, we have one court of inherent jurisdiction that's in every province, and, and that is our highest court. All the other ones, what they did here was they... They put under like the Supreme Court of Canada. I don't know, it was in the late 1800s, but they put their exchequer and their chancery, and then all their other styles of, of administrative courts under the Supreme Court of Canada. There's only one court of inherent jurisdiction. So I don't I don't like to use the uh, court of record as a rule when I'm helping guys. I, I just like to say, look, we need to find your court of inherent jurisdiction because up here you have a right, like as a defendant you have a right to go and defend yourself in a court of inherent ju jurisdiction and you can bump it. Well, up there, do y'all have some sort of constitution? Oh, yeah, there's, they got them coming and going up here. Yeah, and I mean, there's I'm that. sure that if you're reading through it, just because it sounds good, I, I bet that <clears throat> there's some type of declaration of rights and it gives you the right to a court of law. I believe I have that right. I don't think they need to uh, tell me what rights I have and don't have. I think uh, I think that Constitution is for them to recognize what a man has, and uh, not for the man to to say, "Oh, geez, what rights do I got from these characters?" Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that you. Hey, I'm not saying that you derive your right from that Constitution. What I'm saying is that they're supposed to honor that right because of it, because that's their Constitution. That's the way their yes. body is made up. But yes. <laughs> when you're talking about these courts of inherent jurisdiction and general jurisdiction, you know, the most powerful court is a court of law, and it doesn't come under the state at all. And this is why the legislature is supposed to be, like, the uh, judicial branch of government should be separate from the executive and the legislative branch of government, because that's what adds the balance. 